All right, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome. Um, we have a special panel today on managing public transport projects. Uh, we are fortunate to have three distinguished uh, panelists today with years of experience and expertise. Uh, they covered the gamma of all aspects of these kinds of projects, all the way from policy setup to the planning aspects to the development, construction, and the successful delivery of these many complex projects around the world. Uh, I'm hopeful in our panel today we'll get the chance and the opportunity to get some of their insights. Um, it is very hard to cover the dimensions uh, we have. However, it would be great to get some of their insights, how they manage these complexities, how they also successfully delivered on the missions uh, they were accountable for throughout the world. On my, uh, uh, you know, one of my best ways to open things up, I'll look to His Excellency Mother Tire to uh, get us started by setting the stage of what are those aspects that he believes contribute to the quality delivery of sustained uh, public transport programs. Thank you very much. Uh, I think uh, if we talk about the important aspects of transportation, there are several key requirements for delivery of quality and sustainable public transport uh, system and projects. Uh, point one is the alignment with the vision, with the city vision. For Dubai, when His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum instructed the government departments to delight the people, we in the RTA delivered exceptional services to delight the passengers. 100% availability and 99.8 punctuality. This is the metro service. Also, I remember when we designed the metro, we started designing in 2005 and 2006. When we presented the interior design to His Highness, I remember at that time, he told me, Mr. Matar, look, what you presented is totally not accepted, accepted to me because we are building a metro in the Middle East for the first time. And if you want to build something, you have to, to, you have to put the best spec and best specifications to attract people. We have good shopping centers. We have five-star hotels. If you, the standard of the stations, the finishes, is less than that, nobody will, will come to those stations. So to encourage the use of those stations, you have to build a high-level specification, high-level finishes, good air conditions. And at that time, I told him, Your Highness, we are restricted to the budget. He said, fine, but I need, the, because it was very difficult for me to, uh, I didn't know, at that time I knew that Jumeirah Beach and Burj Al Arab, Arab, Burj Al Arab is the, the finishes of those standard is very high and it's very difficult for me to design a station with those, with this standard because, you know, Sheikh Mohammed always the de demanding leader. He said, shouldn't be less than, the Jumeirah Beach and Burj Al Arab. So we spent a lot of money as an RTA to design the station similar to those uh, to shopping centers and five-star hotels. In addition, we actually provided the metro with the world-class surface Wi-Fi. Another, another point I have to mention also regarding the transportation system is the full integration of transportation within the city, city fabric and contest. I mean by that is the transit-oriented development, the TOD. And if you want a successful project, everybody knows when we build the metro at the station, most of the lands and the, uh, the stations, the value of the land has been increased by 30%. 
as a matter of fact, but, but between 14% to 30%, the land, uh, the value land. So it was very important for us uh, to uh, design important project around those stations. Integrated transportation system also, in addition, when we planned the tram, we thought of the integration between the metro and the, and the tram. And we have nowadays two stations where we have the tram and the metro are linked. Another point is the, in the RTA we said every time we have to think of integrations, we have to think of planning and how do we actually uh, connect all those modes of transport. So we established in our organizational structures a transportation integration section to take, to take care of this as a permanent section within the organizational structure. Excellent. Another point I have to raise uh, is regarding the communications and ad uh, adaptation to diverse requirement. We have 200 nationalities. How can we, as an RTA, we communicate with those international uh, nationalities. It's very important that the communication has to be clear between you and the public and the user of transportation modes. Uh, also, we, we, when we designed the, the wagons, we designed the VIB and women children section in the metro. And I have to say something about this also. Sure, absolutely. And so many stories about His Highness. And his recent visit to the tram, I told him, you, you, you know, normally he, he gives comments when he visits uh, uh, sites and projects. I told him, you, you, your, your Highness, I m we must say sorry regarding, we have done a mistake in the metro wagons because of the arrangements of the cabins for the VIB children and family. You know, we have different culture than European culture. And we have corrected this mistake in the tram design. He said, you have not done a mistake. You developed your design. Excellent. So he always actually, as Muhammad Al-Abbar said, Sheikh Muhammad always gives you the chance to work and make mistake, and he encourage you. And he, he'd, he'd like to, to, for people, he does not like people who is hesitant in taking decisions. He like people to work, and he always, uh, he encourage new ideas and innovations. Excellent. So maybe, uh, uh, if, I, if I may, Your Excellency, yeah. I was, I was going to point to Alain. You know, Dubai is now, you know, has, has its success story, and you've heard the aspects of leadership, communication, innovation, <clears throat> excuse me. So maybe you can share with us a little bit from a global perspective how that plays out when it comes to, you know, policy setting and, and those dimensions you see, or, you know, just to set the stage of, of how you, you've seen that across parts of the world as well. Yeah, I think the, the, the advantage of Dubai was that, first of all, there is one authority which makes life easier, that is His Highness, and he has a powerful uh, administration with RTA. And obviously, both, quote, entity are ambitious. And they, they wish to be like, you know, like your airline. Do you want to be the first of, in the world? And the same with, with the metro. Yes. Certainly, from, from my viewpoint, I would recommend everybody to be ambitious. Uh, from time to time, you cannot afford it, and maybe here it was easier, but uh, you know they did their best. But uh, once you're building something like a metro, it's going to stay there for ages. And of course, you want to be in line with the vision of the city of, of Dubai here, but the city around the world. You want to be integrated in the city. You want to be allowing intermodality so that you can jump from the bus or taxi to, 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 to the metro. And of course, design in that, to that extent is very important. Uh, design is very important. I've been involved in this in, in my own career, and I've been working a lot on, on the tramway design, on the metro design, even if the metro is underground in many countries in the world, and you don't see it very much. But though, when it comes into the station, you want it to look uh, modern. You can work on the internal design also to make it as, I remember I, 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 I was very much criticized because when, when buying a new tramway, 220 new tramway from Bombardier, I picked up as a covering the seats, leather. And people said to me, you're totally crazy. They're going to damage immediately this. And in fact, it didn't happen. 
There was no damage, much less damage than when you used normal uh, fabrics, because you know people when they have a beautiful instrument, which is their metro or their tramway, they respect it. Yeah. So I think from a, from a general viewpoint, uh, but I would say what, what, what we just said is that it's the same when you're building a, a new building. You wanted to, a good architect, you wanted to be ambitious. Uh, uh, what it, I think there are plenty of things which are specific to, to public transportation that we may want to, to rebalance later. Very good. How about Dr. Kim? Anything specific you want to open with in terms of uniqueness of uh, projects uh, in this space in the public transport arena? Uh, especially in Korea, the, the situation is very different from Dubai. Uh, the metros in South Korea is built for the providing cheapest public transport, not uh, giving a high level yeah. uh, service. Yeah. So uh, the situation from the government is how can we provide as much as possible the good service to the lower income personalities. So uh, the project is very uh, different from Dubai and South Korea. That's, that's the, the difference we can tell. Okay. okay. Excellent. So Alan, going back to you, before I go back to His Excellency, um, just a question pertaining to uh, your, your specific passion career-wise uh, around policy. What are the initial guidance we can uh, start setting the stage with in terms of you know, how do you ensure that you know, these projects, when they are finally delivered, they line up nicely with the initial strategy and the policy behind these projects? I always say that public transport is an instrument uh, in favor of the decision maker, and the decision maker have to develop a vision of their city. Obviously, it's, it's different in Seoul and in Dubai or in Paris and London, but the people of urban development, urban planning, needs to work hands in hands with the public transport people. They first have to develop a vision. What I miss a lot frequently, it's not the case here because there was a clear vision, but in many cities of the world, because of the election and its change from time to time, you wonder from time to time which is, what is the vision of the city they want. And in big uh, megalopolis, like, you know, I wouldn't stigmatize anybody, but they, you, you know the big cities of 20 or 15 million people, and you hardly know what they want to do. So the first recommendation, who am I to, to make more than this, right. uh, is please develop a vision of the city and make the citizens share that vision. Once this is done, then obviously it sets the, the, the music uh, and, and you want to design a, a new infrastructure project, obviously you would try to fit in this new vision. Uh, and the urban planners who are gi giving generally the, the, the building permit or building license uh, would, would then help you tune your pro project in that good direction. Yes. But it's, it's, it's not the transport people that are making the city. It's yeah. the decision maker and the, and the architects and the urban planner that are making the city. Right. And then we will ready to help them to make a livable city. Yeah, it would be nice if it's yeah, really if it was setting, that way. setting the music would be that simple. But yeah. obviously, that's a great way to illustrate that. I'll go back to His Excellency and you know take things back to Dubai and the complexity of the other projects. Uh, you obviously started by highlighting some key aspects around the metro and the direction from leadership in the country, the culture aspects. Um, it would be great to look more at the extended portfolio of projects because under uh, your direction and guidance, you have a multitude of complex projects actually that are uh, having to somehow meet and achieve the, uh, the goals of this great city. Uh, if you can share with us a little bit more of the highlights around that. I have, uh, actually regarding this point, I have two remarks to make. One is to the government officials. Uh, the, the answer to your questions consists of two parts. One is the, you know, when for decision making and leadership, you have more than one leader deciding within a government and also government directors to understand that the investment in transportation system uh, and infrastructure, it is the steering force for growing economy. 
without a proper infrastructure, without a proper uh, uh, without a proper transportation system, you don't have a life. You don't have tourism, you don't have e economy, you don't have anything. Nobody will come to you if you don't have a strong infrastructures so it can accommodate. And I remember when Sheikh Mohammed approved the uh, 2020 um, strategic plan for Dubai, I remember he gave instructions, clear instructions to government departments that he said, I need a plan which is flexible and it can accommodate any growth which can happen within the city. Any sudden growth, any changes, don't come later on and tell me that the growth which is uh, within the city, you cannot accommodate it with your plan. So make flexible plan. That is the first point. The second point within the RTA, uh, which I want to say is we have about 250 projects. And sometimes, always when the government allocate a budget for you, as a leader or as a manager or a director general, you want to decide w what is your priorities. W which you, sh you should spend on roads, you should spend on buses, tra other transport mode, the traffic, whatever. You know, there are so many things, so many mode of transport within the infrastructure. And you, as a leader, you have to make a decision. For that, we have different program. Uh, we have, for example, in the RTA, 250 projects in public transport and roads. And w because it's the, our work is very complex, and uh, we have actually established inter enterprise program management office, EBMO, that did, uh, dedicate, dictates the policies and guidelines for project management. That's one. The second one is the EBMO also oversees the important and strategic projects. In addition, in addition to those, uh, we have the portfolio management system for prioritization across the RTA. With all of this, uh, together, we decide to, how to allocate budget. In summary, actually, uh, we have a strong leadership and direction in the, in the regard of project and uh, portfolio management. Yeah. That, that is to summarize. Uh, That's a great point. Uh, actually. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Because what I, I think professionals around the room and uh, and ones around organization setting standards would be very happy because at the end of the day, you're you're setting the stage to put this in practice. You know, whether it's the prioritization, the portfolio aspects, the agility even that we're seeing and and keeping these plans. You know flexible, you know, combined with uh, strong leadership and decision making. So it's really, uh, would be interesting now to look at the uh, experience in Korea and SMRT and, you know, really if you can give us some insights into the kinds of complexities, because His Excellency is talking about a lot of comp complexities, you know, starting from his remarks around culture, what's unique to Dubai, and then taking us through those dimensions. What else could we learn from um, uh, your, the experience in Korea uh, pertaining especially to complexity around these public transport projects? Uh, for the uh, success project management, all the processes such as the project development, planning, management, and the feedback, all these are very requirements. Yeah. So uh, especially for the carrying out the public transport project, it is important to achieve from project vision and objectives. So strong leadership from project manager and the project company and the managing your project stakeholders are also important uh, key requirements. So in 2004, Seoul has so reformed public transportation systems uh, and uh, we increased the mode share of public transport from 50% to 64%. So uh, if we have enough time, I can tell you about uh, our sort of, uh, pro progress. Very good. Okay. No, I'll definitely look forward to those insights yeah. here shortly. Um, I'll go back to your, your Excellency. I and mean, we cannot be in a panel like this without, uh, you know, highlighting uh, the the great uh, upcoming story for Dubai with the Expo 2020. Uh, I'm sure we're we're interested to uh, hear some, uh, you know, points uh, around the projects, around the key priorities that will be uh, on your plate and others as they get the the city and and the country ready for that event. Uh, 
I think Expo 2020 is an important uh, event which will be hosted by uh, Dubai. But I don't want to make, talk too much about Expo 2020 because tomorrow morning, Mr. Hilal Murray will give uh, a session about Expo 2020 in details and he will talk about uh, all the projects regarding uh, uh, Expo 2020. But I can mention, uh, give you some information about maybe the transportation system and what we are, go what we are going to do uh, till 2020. Uh, in summary, everybody realized the scale of the event and the importance to, uh, to your image. We also understand that this, the requirement is a world-class infrastructure where uh, transportation, hotel, entertainment, or health. We need also uh, to ensure that a legacy is left for the future generations. We are not just building uh, something temporary. This is some, something which will stay for a long time for, for the Emirates. Friendly and efficient services also. We have 25 million multinational visitors will be coming in six months. We have to think of how of, of the traffic management, we have to think of mobility, we have, uh, it is not a small number in addition to what, is, what we have, 25 million coming within six months. We have to think, and uh, with our um, international consultant, experts, how do we going to handle those people within uh, six months? We have also organizational framework for the preparation. We established an efficient organizational setup. There is a higher committee chaired by the Crown Prince, uh, Sheikh Hamdan bin Mohammed. Uh, he, he, because the Sheikh Mohammed knows that he wants quick decision for, for, for this important event. That's why he uh, assigned uh, Sheikh Hamdan, the Crown Prince, to chair this committee with the assistant of Sheikh Ahmed bin Said. So we have the uh, uh, highest government uh, officials to give the support for the uh, higher committee. Uh, in addition, we have different uh, organizational structure for the committee. We have more than one committee established, but w within the RTA, we have seven teams, uh, every team in charge of certain sector in transportation. I'm not going to go through them because it's a, one of them is the crowd management uh, team. Okay. Uh, in addition, uh, uh, in addition, we, we actually for sure going to uh, expand the metro red line it's around uh, uh, 15 uh, kilometer of uh, metro will be established. All the infrastructures for the network uh, around Al Maktoum airport will be ready. Uh, before uh, 2019 with the metro. We have to finish one year before and try to do um, um, uh, trials and make sure that uh, the system is working very well. And I hope by, uh, by 2018 also the Tihad Rail will be completed. We are in stage two now. Yes. Soon will be awarded the stage two, which is Dubai, uh, Abu Dhabi Dubai and uh, Abu Dhabi Al Ain which will also uh, enhance the, the, the uh, or uh, it will add uh, additional uh, capacity for the existing infrastructure for the transportation system. Yeah, thank you, Your Excellency. Good to put it had real on the spot as well, so yeah. no, no pressure there. Yeah. Um, actually, uh, allow, you know, you, you heard some kind of diverse views. You heard, you know, the driving factors for the experience in Korea had to do also with, you know, controlled budget in a way or a, a certain solution offer uh, different than some of the stories you were hearing about Dubai and the typical coverage all the way from the top leadership, whether for the metro to date and or the upcoming events. Maybe I'll start with you by taking us through, you know, what are the sets of those, uh, you know, tidbits of, of criteria that you believe you've seen then in the space of dealing with public transport projects that will create that consistency and success? You know, I think we've covered many of those already in, in those remarks. Um, have you had in your experience, you know, the top three or the top four when people ask you really what, uh, what should we keep in mind? 
If you kind of uh, split public transport project in different phases, uh, obviously, like when you're designing a building, you, you have a design phase, but what makes it, and that's normal, you have the first and last scheme and then the more detailed design, but what makes it very different for public transport is because you are, have to integrate your project in the public space, and that makes it very different. If you have a piece of land, a new building, of course you need your urban or a building license and all that, but we are on the stretch of kilometers in the public space. And, and the public space is to everybody normally. And that means that there are many stakeholders involved. The city, of course, the urban planners, but you have also, and the municipalities, when you're a country where you have a municipalities or many municipalities that you cross over, then you have the neighbors of your line, whether it's a tramway line or an underground line, then you have the, the future riders, the population, will they use it? And you have the, the retail people, you know, there, there, there is a, an American who say that says that no parking, no business. It has been shown in other places of the world that most of the shopping is not made with car, but is made with public transport. But they're still going saying that we don't want this, they're gonna kill us. So from time to time we provide for indemnification of the, re, the, the retail people because they say during the work you're gonna suffer yeah. and we have to indemnify you. Correct. But you have also the utilities that because there are pipes of electric and so on. So the consultation process is huge. And it, it, it's maybe different from one country to the other, but I, I bet the future would be that way. It's, it's unfortunate eventually, but in many places the consultation takes years because you have to involve everybody and it's in the law. So from time to time I'm saying it's kind of a, a balance, you have to find a balance between efficiency and democracy. And from time to time it's no longer efficient because it's too democratic, because you're asking everybody to yeah. say his word and one guy will raise his hand and say, stop, I hate this project and it stop it for a few months. Then you can go to court and block it. So I think one of you should focus on this consultation and that requires very good people able not to say it's yes or no but to be able to adjust and fine-tune the project so that you meet all the expectation around and one of the good things that we've been doing a lot in, in in Europe was that you make a video of how the city would look after the project Excellent. because people who don't realize what it will be and generally those projects are in embellishing making the city better, it's nicer, more pleasant to live. But, you know, simple people don't realize this. So you make a video and you show them, you say, hey, don't oppose this. You're gonna have a brand fantastic new city after the public transport road. That's for the consultation road. But, and of course, you have a lot of studies, environment studies, uh, impact studies, uh, yeah. traffic studies and all this. So it also takes a, a while. And this is intricate with the consultation process. But the, what, what is really the word that uh, uh, I like that you all of you have used is the word complex. A public transport project is, I'm afraid, but maybe I have a narrow-minded, more complex than just building a, 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 an infrastructure, normal infrastructure. Because it, it, it combines, of course, civil works, that's the easiest part. When you look at developing country, the first skills that they grab is building roads and bridge, which is civil works. That's the easiest part, I would say. Of course, now today, roads are much more smarter than they used to be, but still. But then you have to come electromechanics. Then you have IT-driven technologies. And all this need to work together as a system. Yes. And so the integrator role is awfully uh, important. Yes. Who is doing it? It's hard to know whether you can subcontract the integration or you have the capacities in-house to do it. It's a challenge for a, a, a gentleman like Mr. Altair, of course, with, to decide whether he, he, he subcontract the integration or he takes it home. And, and it's his team that is doing it, which is, of course, a lot of risk because you have to talk to all the parties and be sure that it works at the end of the day. That's what makes it so difficult. It has a train which is running on time, reliable, like they did in Metro. Here, And then I think what makes it also difficult at the implementation phase is because you are in the public space, first of all you have to go as fast as possible. And techniques should be developed and are developed so that when you, you put a track 
in the middle of the city doesn't last ages because lots of projects have been rejected by the citizens because it took too long and it damaged the city for a while. So the sooner the better. Then second, of course you have safety requirements because you're in the middle of the city. You need to be sure that there is no accident and, and the traffic can, goes on because it's also the traffic that needs to goes on to go on despite the fact that you're digging in the city. And in, in cities like old cities, not maybe Dubai, it's not that easy because it's a kind of a medieval type of city structure. Sure. And so, you know, it's not very wide, it's very narrow. So there is a question of traffic, the question of safety, and, and as fast as possible. And that, I think, makes public transit even more demanding than any other project. Yeah, that's a great description. I, I like the, um, the visioning exercise, the, the use of videos, try to envision. Dubai definitely was an example of cities that did transform, and I would imagine also in Seoul. I'd love to hear from Dr. Kim as well, you know, how, how you know, you've seen success. And, and you know, I, I personally did ride uh, your system, and I was so impressed, you know, with the, with the pace by which it moves, the electronics and all of that. So if you want to talk to us about success also from uh, your angle, however, you know, if you want to shed some lights on innovations, around some of the points, uh, both His Excellency and uh, Alain Med as well, that'd be great. Yeah. Uh, the core of the service of public transport policy is spreading of traffic demand among the several modes to transportation, the dramatically increase public transport model share and correspond to climate changes to achieve com competitiveness as a metropolitan city and make a step towards such sustainable mobility. Uh, in order to achieve this, uh, Seoul implemented public transport reform in 2004. Uh, let me go over the full details of the reform work. The first, the bus system reform, the bus system reform was to change the fundamentals of the bus operations from public competitions to service-centered competition. Key to this project was the uh, bus company was operated by private company into the, the quasi bus uh, companies, public companies. So uh, by doing that, we can manage the restructuring the bus lines, which the, is the very in, inefficiently designed into the very efficient systems. Uh, doing, by doing that, we set the, the bus lines two different ways. Uh, one is the trunk line bus lines, which uh, operates and runs the, from station to station, very uh, uh, important ones. And that, uh, the other ones, the local buses, running from, from the local areas to central area, just uh, moving, to doing that. Okay. So uh, by doing that, uh, many people can reduce travel times. But uh, they, the problem was they have to transfer from one mode to another. Yes. So there is the, to reduce the pairs for the, the transportation users, True. we adopted the free, free transfer systems. So uh, they don't need to pay the money when they transfer from one line to another. Uh, by doing uh, to do that, we uh, accepted that uh, the AFC, automatic power collecting system, then uh, they can uh, realize uh, where they get on uh, which station and uh, they transfer as many as they want and uh, uh, they can finish just paying one time uh, per hour. So uh, secondary, uh, the secondary, we, we adopted both information system, BIS, which is called BIS. Then the day we are giving to the citizens uh, how the bus, when the bus comes, and the way it goes the, by the, the cellular phones and it's uh, and the, the using that uh, 
electronic devices. Yes. So what people can use is uh, can go to the uh, bus station by the, at the exact time, and the bus comes to the, the exact time, and the, they can reduce the waiting time, and the, they, they, they can go to the, their uh, destination. But in short, they can reduce the travel time. Mm -hmm. And that uh, the last one is using the uh, central bus ex exclusive lanes, which means only the bus can run uh, to the bus exclusive lane by the center of the uh, road, so that the uh, bus can do not interfere with the other automatic cars, so that uh, they can reduce the travel time too. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. So we're trying to achieve lots of innovations to help with the ease of the process, the uh, the aspects of control, but also you know keeping the user in mind with yeah. the use of those technology. Fantastic. So yeah. maybe I, I start with you also, Dr. Kim. Is um, you know many around the room um, obviously are facing, as Alain mentioned, those kinds of complexities around public transport. Um, and you know uh, in my career sometimes I learn from what not to do as well. Sometimes so we always talk about lessons learned and quick wins and shining stories, but also, you know, there could be tips you want to share with us around, um, you know, what not to do when you approach, you know, a, a complex initiative such as what you've faced and you continue to face as you grow and take care of the network there in Korea. Yeah, uh, bus reform certainly was not an easy one. The, during the project process, so we had to face a lot of doubt and backslash from the stakeholders. Especially private bus operations resisted as strongly as they had invested in best interest in their business. So the bus industry had a bunch of problems, and it was hard to change the bus route because most of them were run by private bases, not the uh, service bases. So uh, the operators uh, compete for the Comparably to the drivers and the right for the buses. In the end, the resulting the, in the ridership of the buses decreased. Okay. So they agreed. The, uh, yeah. They were agreed to change the bus loads to, and the, the free transfers to increase Very and. Uh, demand for the public some, transport. Some aspects of flexibility yeah, as well yeah, as we yeah. cross modes and so forth. Very good. Mm. Alan, give us some, uh, some of your uh, you know, key uh, learnings uh, that uh, if you know, a starting uh, practitioner in, in the field of these kinds of projects or professionals with years of experience, you know, what, what do you think? Uh, yeah, I try to make a comparison when you go to the doctor or to the lawyer. Uh, if, if you're not a smart client, you never get a good recommendation from your lawyer or from a doctor. And the same applies here. If you, in, in English they say you need to be two to tango. And I think that's pretty true in the public transport project. Uh, even if you have the best skilled contractor, engineering consultant uh, and whatever, if the client doesn't have the capacity to quote, criticize, but also have a, a critical look at what is proposed. It doesn't have a team which is able to be a good client and to make the decision at the right time. Then I think it won't work. So as I said, you need to be two to tango. And I'm very admirative of what has been done here at RTA, for instance, because I remember them when they started in 2000 something. You know, it was a small team. Yeah. And under the leadership of my neighbor, of course, they built you know, a whole organization which is now able to run a project of billions. It was already in, in the metro, which was a success. And I think that's the first thing I, think, I would think, is that for all of those who don't have this sort of organization, please build it. Or at least, if you don't build it inside because you believe it's too expensive and you have only one project, at least ask the assistance of some consult to help you to be a good client if I can say so. Right. That would be one recommendation. Yeah. Of course, the rest is, uh, is normal you know, project management. I, I think the selection of your project manager is one of the most difficult tasks that you have as senior manager. Because 
it requires, you know, qualities. You need not to be an expert. It's not the best engineer in town because we don't need a, a very, very awfully qualified, but he should be able to understand everything. But also he has a lot of team spirit, human, emotional intelligence, as we say, yeah. and also a very good capacity to be flexible in the project, not to keep off for his line, but be able to negotiate with all the stakeholders how to make the project progress. And I think if you have, you know, it's one of the most difficult decisions to take is yeah. to select the right uh, person. That's a great point. You know, I was intrigued when Brian uh, from NASA was talking to us about the emotional intelligence aspect, and I think that seven minute of terror, yeah. I think, is a good indication of what kind of a team you would want to have to have at the helm yeah. to really rely on the multitude of preparation and efforts and systems and so forth. Your Excellency, it's really, uh, you know, it's, it's very obvious the, the story, you know, in the RTA has been really uh, a phenomenal example of, of capturing many of those dimensions of success. So I'd like to hear your view of, you know, the top ones that come to your mind in terms of you know, what success, uh, how to achieve that success and how it could look like for, as Alain mentioned, also the practitioners, the project managers and the organization. Yes, uh, I think within the last nine years, the RTA have implemented project of values of $20 billion. And I think the reasons of success is three reasons. One is the leadership without the support of His Highness Sheikh Mohammed uh, would not have achieved what we have achieved. Second is the planning and third organization monitoring and control. You have to have a control. Without a control uh, and the monitoring system, if you don't have a monitoring system it will be a, a disaster. When I said leadership uh, of course the we had a very clear, uh, strong vision, very clear. And we have the right team. The, uh, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed, when we established the, RTE, the RTA, he gave me the authority to choose the team who should be working with me. And I have the full authority to uh, change even uh, anybody who will not work as within the team, because sometimes there are people who are good and they are knowledgeable, but they are not a team player, so they shouldn't be within the team. Uh, team playing is very important. Maybe if you have somebody, one even, within, he can make big noise within an organization and he actually try to attract the attention and try to make, he will cause a problem. You have to chip him off. That's one of the things I learned. And you have to have also the mutual trust. If there is no mutual trust, it's a problem within the team. Another thing is the planning. All the project plans must be aligned and coordinated with the other projects. And you have to work with the all parties, like the client, the engineer, the contractor, the operator, because sometimes the operator even have to get into the project at an early stage, where even at the study stage. You need to do that. And you must integrate that with the master plan. The organization monitoring and control system, that is very important. You have to make the right decision at the right time. You have to have the risk management process clear. In addition, the uh, strong change management process also. You have, to, you have to have the full picture. All this, without this, you will have a problem. You asked uh, my colleagues what not to do, and I have three, four things to say about this please, also. Please. <laughs> uh, don't pretend that you know, you know it all. Never. You must, you must, uh, you should not wait also till the problem we care and try to find solution. You have to be proactive, approach the, to the problem, try to find solutions, decision making. Never make, uh, make assumption on the status of anything. You have, you have always to check things by yourself, make sure that everything is going very well, on track. Never, never, never leave the, the, the ownership of the project 
in the hands of other parties. If you are the leader, you have to keep the ownership in your hand. These are it's very important. If you give it to somebody else, may, he may not understand, especially if you are on the top of the leading team and you are the leader, he may, may not have the clear vision or he does not have the, what the government want. So he may commit a disaster and then everything will be, uh, you will lose everything. Thank so you. you have to keep thinking. Yes, thank you, Excellency.